um, starting with Claire Downey from the uh, Rediscovery Centre based in Ballymun, which focuses on recycling, sustainable fashion, education and research. And Claire is a researcher with a focus on reducing energy demand. She has a degree in chemical engineering from the University of Queensland and used to work for Indiver. Great, thank you very much um, to Tommy Simpson and John Gormley for the invitation to speak. I'm very pleased to be here uh, to represent the Rediscovery Centre as the National Centre for Circular Economy, also as a board member of Green Foundation Ireland, and to be part of the conversation about this really far-reaching uh, report. So I'd like to make the connection quickly between the circular economy and reducing energy demand. And um, I think I'll start by illustrating it with an everyday product that we all have and use, or most of us have and use. Um, if you start to take apart a mobile phone, as we saw um, Minister Asheen Smith take apart a disposable vape, interestingly, on Twitter recently, you'll find 300 components and 85% of the stable elements of the periodic table. So there's an incredible amount of resources just in this really small piece of equipment. And those resources are extracted and processed and shipped and assembled and shipped again probably and assembled again somewhere and finally retailed before they reach us. So an average mobile phone costs around 80 kilos of carbon to produce and there are 3.5 billion of them in use right now, excluding what we've already uh, wasted. And that's just mobile phones, smartphones. It's not other types of phones. It's not your devices. It's not your IT equipment. When we start to think about one simple product, you can see very quickly how much goes into our products. And most of that is around energy. When we talk about carbon emissions, we think about transport emissions. We're transporting products. When we think about agriculture, we're making food. It's not a thing farmers do for the crack. It's an actual production system that leads to food that leads to food waste and all of this adds up into our energy demand. And so the Ellen MacArthur Foundation estimates that around 45% of global greenhouse gas emissions are associated with the extraction and production of our goods. And around 90% of biodiversity loss as well is associated with this activity. So we absolutely need to talk about energy demand and reducing energy demand by reducing our consumption. And in Ireland, we have some statistics from Eurostat about what we're consuming here, and they are quite surprising. Our consumption um, footprint, uh, which measures the impact of the goods that we use here, that we import, the energy imported through the products we use, is the second highest in Europe. We know that we have extremely high textile consumption. We're the fourth highest in Europe on that, depending on which figure you look to. Look. We know that we have the highest production of plastic waste and the highest production of plastic packaging is placed on the market here in Ireland. We're not exactly sure why that is. Perhaps it's the type of statistics we're declaring, but I think it tells a story about our habits and our consumption patterns here that we absolutely need to address. There is obviously a lot behind all of this consumption. There's huge budgets behind marketing that's driving it. The linear economy is the economy at the moment that is still the most affordable, the most accessible, the most viable for business uh, um, as business as usual. And we are locked into this system at the moment. Um, we know there are lots of other benefits to circular economy, not just environmental, of course, there's community resilience. We saw that through the pandemic. There's skills, there's jobs and well-being. So we need to make a shift urgently to this more circular economy and keep our products in circulation and reduce demand for new products where the energy inputs are. We have seen a lot of change in Ireland recently. We've seen huge shift in policy. We have a new minister for a circular economy. That was good timing. And a new circular economy unit, two dedicated units in the department, as well as a new strategy, a new program. And um, soon we'll also see a new national waste management plan for a circular economy. So we have seen great momentum there. And now we just need to see that policy put into practice. We need to see how we can build on the vision um, to lead Europe in the circular economy. We need to see real focus on these prevention, the reduction piece on reuse and repair, on the targets that we hope to see come through for reuse. And we need to see all the different ways we can make it as easy, as accessible and as affordable and viable to be more circular. 
One area I just wanted to mention in particular that we're very involved in at the Rediscovery Center is in communications and behavioral change. And I know communications is only a small part of the picture, but we do think it's really important. We have done a survey recently that found only 25% of people understand the term circular economy. I know there was a discussion earlier about language and use of language, and we absolutely need to see how do we describe this better and communicate it better. Um, and also, how do we engage citizens in this journey? How do we do more, for example, participatory decision making, which I know is in the report as well. And we've done a little bit of work in that area recently with the food waste roadmap, trying to involve people in how we design our policies and how it impacts them. So I think, um, I suppose in terms of the recommendations in the report, I thought it was really interesting that the same recommendations applicable very much to energy transport, energy consumption, also very much apply to circular economy. So how do we avoid excess consumption? That's the very basic principle of circular economy. How do we repurpose and share and keep our goods in circulation for as long as possible? And how do we supplement existing products with better designed products that will last for longer, that can be repaired? Um, and I think all of those, um, as I said, absolutely align with the um, with the circular economy principles. So those are my reflections on the report, and I hope that um, helps to stimulate some further discussion. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.